Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I'm going to follow up here on the post I put up earlier on my, <coughs> excuse me, my Joe Stradamus page with regards to the attack of the polar vortex part two. And what is happening, what we're looking at here are the uh, temperatures, whether they're above or below normal. Now, I'm, I'm looking down right at the ground level, but this warming is going up all the way up up to the highest parts of the atmosphere. This is the second attack uh, of the uh, polar vortex that exists in the highest levels of the atmosphere. And you can see its reflection in, of what's going on in terms of the warm air uh, temperatures running uh, close to uh, 20 to 25 degrees above normal throughout all of the Arctic region right now. And that also extends down into Alaska and into Western Canada. And also with the what we've been experiencing today it's very warm in the northeast and into eastern canada and what happens is if we as we go through time you know that war warming just continues right through the, the uh, period here in varying strengths but it's still here when we go out uh, over the uh, next two weeks of time and what happens is is the polar vortex is weakened up in this position here it displaces cold air. Now, if you look at the, the, the dark blues and what happens with the dark blues, uh, that's where the temperatures are below normal. You see, as we go through the period that that area it comes and goes in the east, the temperatures look like, for the most part, are averaging near normal. And then you have this large area of below normal temperatures by the end of the period. Usually when you have these warning warmings that go up all the way in the atmosphere, and I just want to say right off the bat, um, this is not really my strong suit. Um, I've been learning quite a bit over the last number of months regarding all this, that it takes, it, there's a, a couple of weeks of lag time uh, when the change goes on in the upper atmosphere and in terms of how it's reflected in the lower atmosphere. So the, the bottom line is this is the second time we saw this in, in the end, at the end of December, and it took about two weeks uh, we saw this starting to come out around December 18th or so, and it took about two weeks for the whole thing to play out. And uh, the result was that uh, instead of being 12 degrees above normal like we were through much of December, so far this January, we we're only averaging a little over one degree above normal. So, And I'm only talking about one specific point here, so which is ours in the New York area. And uh, when you're about one degree above normal, that's really within the uh, area of statistical noise. When you look at winters over the long term, in terms of statistics, uh, you're falling right into about the average range, plus one, plus one and a half, minus one, minus one and a half. So we have definitely cooled down considerably from the unrelenting warming pace that we saw back in November and December. Now, I'll switch to the short range so we can take a look at what's going, going to be going on because we are uh, going to warm up here um, qu quite a bit probably uh, as we uh, move through. And the reason is, let me get to a surface map, with all that's going on at the surface. Okay, let's roll back from that big bomb on the, on the last day because that's kind of meaningless at this point. But uh, we have our front that comes through, and there's our coastal low that we've been watching the last few days that winds up going way out. And we get a shot of colder air for Friday into the start of the weekend, which quickly pulls away. A bit of a warm front comes through. Now we're into Monday, and there's another weak cold front that comes through on Monday uh, to turn the winds around to northerly on Tuesday. So Tuesday looks to be a chilly day. And, and here you see that next storm that's going to be going to the Great Lakes uh, and probably be a pretty good, pretty strong storm there. And then after that, it turns very cold here uh, as we move toward uh, February 7th, February 8th. And it, and it basically stays cold on this right through the period um, and with something that it shows up toward the end, which again, who knows if that's right. But the bottom line is that uh, we have this warm-up that's going to occur briefly uh, into next week. And I would not be surprised, depending on winds and what kind of setup we have, 
that um, you know we have one day where temperatures, if we get into the warm sector, maybe we won't. It's hard to say. And then we could have temperatures up into the 50s uh, briefly. And then it, it looks like we're going to get into at least a what looks to be like a, a, a period of at least normal temperatures or below normal temperatures to take us into the middle of February. Now, I also want to just make other, something else clear. When I speak of volatility uh, in terms of the overall weather pattern, uh, I'm talking about uh, big swings in both directions. Now, maybe that's maybe the model, the GFS is telling us that maybe uh, we'll get into a stretch of cold that will last uh, more than a few days. That seems to be what it's indicating, but we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of changes that, are, that the model is going to make uh, over time. But um, I'm thinking that with all the extremes that we have seen as the uh, weather pattern attempts to normalize, uh, we will um, probably get another shot at something uh, before this winter is done. Now let's see if we can uh, pull up the North American. Looks like it's out all the way through, so that's good. And we can run it. We can, we can run this through. And there's our trough for the for the uh, Thursday that doesn't phase in time for any kind of storm. And then you have this Great Lakes system. Here's that system here. And you have ridging that builds and lifts up to right to the lakes. So we have warm air coming up the eastern seaboard, and then that goes away. But then another trough around the, the uh, first weekend of, Dece of February. And then notice this vortex now parks itself in eastern Canada and just kind of sits there. And if that happens, then we're going to have the prolonged cold that the model is indicating. So um, looks like very interesting times ahead as we go into February. Uh, the long range seems to be playing out as a number of long range forecasters have been suggesting, which would be that February and March could wind up being uh, cold and rather dynamic. Um, we'll, we'll see how it all evolves and um, have a great day for your Wednesday. And it's my birthday, so I'm going to enjoy myself. And we will, uh, of course, talk more. See you on the website, see you on Facebook and on Twitter.